Our uh, theme this year is the heart of man plans his way, but the Lord establishes his steps. Proverbs 16, 9. Uh, and we're talking about a process of loving our neighbors, moving them to loving God, and moving them to serve others. Uh, yesterday, I, I uh, did a wedding for Erica Pritz and um, her now husband, Sam. Um, Seth is here. Seth, you rocked it yesterday in the wedding. Um, and it was, it was kind of interesting, and it was neat to see how this cycle is actively working, and we don't even realize it. Valinda was sitting with one of her coworkers um, at the reception, and Valinda kind of gave me a heads up before, and she said, you know, I'm really working on this guy, and he's such a sweet guy, and, and I just, I really want him to know the Lord, and I'm not going to give up on him. And um, so right before he left, they, um, they came over to my table. Uh, Valinda introduced him to me, and he said... Valinda is not going to give up on me. And I said, well, that's a great thing. And I said, you may as well just submit now because she won't give up. <laughs> um, and that's this process working. Um, everybody who we know who's in our circle of influence is a neighbor to us. Um, and if we do that and we talk to people openly about the Lord, um, they are super respectful nine and a half times out of ten, and they actually appreciate it. Um, I think that's a case in point, and I do think uh, God will be faithful. Um, we're going to be talking about prayer today, and I, I think um, it's appropriate uh, to kick off this mini-series within a series um, this year by opening up on prayer. We're going to spend the next few weeks talking about the power of prayer and how we need to apply that um, for this congregation and in our own personal lives. Let's bow our heads. Uh, God, we come before you, and, and God, we, um, we do lean on your everlasting arms. Uh, God, we, we trust you, and we, uh, we need to completely rely on you. Uh, we need to pray more. We need to trust more. And God, we need, need, need your guidance. God, I, I am so excited for what you have in store for this congregation and just to see the way that you're, you're already moving within this body of believers is absolutely incredible. God, I pray that you move us today, that you move our hearts, and that you move, uh, that you move us into action. God, let us live each day as if it's our last. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, I am taking a wild adventure tonight because I, um, I, I, I don't need a lot of sleep. I don't love sleep, so I'm doing a flip trip down to Nashville. Uh, this evening, I fly down to Nashville. I, I will land at about 11 p.m. or a little after 11 p.m. Um, the, the goal is by midnight to be back on the road to come back up to Somerset. So um, all throughout the night, if you're up and you're bored and you just want to call and harass me, um, feel free. I'll be up. I'll be driving. Um, so why am I doing this? I'm driving Stefan Ronnie's U-Haul up. Um, today is our 12th wedding anniversary. Uh, Steph put a post up and she said, what a better way to spend our 12th wedding anniversary than to just, um, she didn't really say it this way, but I'm, I'm paraphrasing, but basically um, to lean into God and to send our U-Haul up and they're kind of taking this step in faith. Um, I'm really excited just to see how God works in our lives whenever we pray and we look kind of in hindsight to see how God's been working and answering our prayers in these really strange, magnificent ways, because I really think that's how God works. Um, I think a lot of times we pray very specifically, as we should, and then God kind of derails us and just wrecks those prayers and shifts them and shifts us into a different direction. Uh, Stephen Ronnie prayed uh, many years ago, well, first of all, let me back up a little bit. Stephanie prayed that the man who she fell in love with, much like Valinda, um, if Steph was just persistent enough, that he would fall in love with the Lord. Um, Ronnie didn't really have much to do with Christianity. Um, in fact, a lot of times he kind of mocked Christianity. Um, Natalie and I, uh, I think I've talked about this before, um, we really struggled Whenever, uh, whenever we did the wedding, I was asked to do their wedding, and I really struggled with that because, you know, the passage about not being yoked with unbelievers, um, I, I think, is really important. Um, at the point, there wasn't really, uh, at that point, there wasn't really clear evidence that, uh, that he was a, a believer at all. 
Um, but we kind of talked about it and said, you know, this is a time where I feel like we're so, so good at drawing lines in the sand and saying this is what God wants that we end up kind of being like Paul before Paul became a Christian. Like he knew what, what God wanted, right? Um, God wants me to persecute Christians, and he was, he was just absolutely sure. Um, and so I, I didn't want to take that hard line in the sand and, and, and be wrong. Um, and so we just kind of prayed about it. Not only I prayed about it together, and we said, you know, the best thing to do is to do the wedding and pray for his soul. A much better approach. Um, little did we know God would answer that prayer, and not only would Ronnie become a Christian, but he would become like this power Christian. And he would, um, he would soon be, a, a, to his surprise too, a missionary going overseas to Haiti for, um, for many years. Um, Steph and Ronnie really prayed that God would bless their work and, and that, that that would continue to grow, that they would stay in Haiti, and that that, that work would just flourish in, in Haiti. Uh, in 2019, the day that we were leaving Ecuador, our, our group here that went to Ecuador, the day that we were leaving to come home from Ecuador, my brother Tim was taking a team leaving Nashville to go to Haiti. Um, when they got to Haiti, one of their first days there, they had that tragic accident um, where uh, it, it caused Tim's good friend uh, to be in extremely critical care. Uh, the whole top of his scalp was taken off. Um, he had to be uh, air flighted out of, emergency flighted out of um, Haiti and back to the United States. Uh, it kind of, put, uh, kind of put a stop to that trip um, and didn't really encourage the group, so to speak. That was the beginning of kind of a downward spiral for Steph and Ronnie, and, and just one thing happened after the other. Um, they prayed for a baby. Um, and Stephanie got pregnant pretty much right away, and she lost her baby in Haiti. Um, they prayed that that work would, uh, would continue and it would grow, um, and it did the exact opposite. And, and all the signs were pointing to they needed to get out of Haiti and, and get out quickly. Um, and so they did, and they moved back to Nashville and have been there now for, for a couple of years. And they just kept praying. They said, God, please just use us. It doesn't matter where it is. Just use us. Um, and, and in a very strange set of circumstances, um, Ronnie was offered a, a really great position in no other place than here, um, up in Cambria County. But, uh, but he was offered a really good job, a really good position. And they prayed about it, and they were, they were looking at different options, and they had all these, you know, different job offers, and, and one was going back into Haiti and, and working with sex-trafficked children, and something that Stephanie was really passionate about. Um, and all the signs just kept pointing to, to here. Uh, at the same time, we were praying, and, and just, you know, we've been praying that God would break into this congregation and kind of move us from, from being stuck in neutral to being shoved into drive and, and moving forward and just blessing people for the kingdom. Um, Steph and Ronnie are, are, are go-getters, and, and Natalie and I talked last week, and we're just kind of brainstorming, and we talked with our Wednesday night group this past Wednesday, and I think there are some really genuinely big things in store for this congregation, just structurally and... and um, people working together and getting people equipped, really equipping people. Um, we're really good at talking about equipping, and organization is not my skill. And I said that at, at Wednesday night. I said, I'm not a type A personality that's like, take charge and just point people and say, this is what you need to do. It's just not my personality. And I, and I have always struggled with managing people. I, I just don't do it well. Um, I never have. I never will. Um, interestingly, Steph and Ronnie are both like incredibly type A personalities, very organized, very good at structuring, uh, very good at managing people. It's what they did when they were in Haiti, and I'm excited for that. And I think that there's, there's really, really, really huge things that are on the brink of, of happening here. The, the drive on, on moving churches forward always is prayer. 
Every statistician who studies church culture, who studies church stats, who studies church growth, all of them say there's one component that always is behind growing churches, and that's prayer. There are tons of other variables, and there are different things that work, and you know, certain methods that work, and some that don't, but the one thing that is always consistent 100% of the time is prayer. In this past week, well, let me start with this. Uh, do you guys remember this guy? We were going to have DP like kind of act this out. You know, the, all, the Allstate um, Mayhem guy? You remember those commercials? Um, I love those commercials. And we were going to have DP kind of do some, some, some acting, and maybe we still could, because DP is like just a walking disaster, right? <laughs> Uh, but when our lives are full of mayhem, isn't it really difficult to, to pray? I mean, we're talking about this in, in Job, in the adult class on Sunday mornings. When your world is wrecked, when your world is falling apart, maybe it's not difficult to pray for some people, but it's difficult to know what to pray for. And I feel like we were stuck in this position as a family uh, when my sister Michelle was, was really, really critical. Um, she was given, and, and I, I think I can talk about this openly now, uh, we're far enough away from this, but she was given less than a 1% chance of living within 48 hours. When we called all the family up here, she was not supposed to make it. Um, I told my children that their Aunt Michelle was not going to be with us. Uh, I drove to my nephew's house, and I told him, your mom is really, really critical right now, uh, and she's probably not going to make it. Um, Mandy and I started making phone calls to family members, telling them, it's time now to come up and say your final goodbyes. Um, and our family did that. And um, our prayer, quite honestly, um, if, if I'm being completely honest, our prayer was that she would go peacefully. Uh, there was one of us out of the entire family whose prayer was different, and his prayer was, God, don't take the mother of my children. And he would not resign to the idea that she was going to leave. He leaned into God, he trusted God, and quite honestly, that day, Michelle made this miraculous turnaround that baffled the doctors. Uh, and she's continued to improve every single day since then. And I just mentioned in class this morning, uh, they're working on a plan to get her out of the hospital and into a physical rehabilitation center, which is phase two of getting her home. Um, God is faithful. Uh, prayer is what drives us. And so I want to talk about somebody whose life was, was kind of in, in mayhem, and she prayed. Our story today is in 1 Samuel chapter 1. I'm going to read um, the previous verses before we read the section that Jared read for us this morning. There was a certain man, this is 1 Samuel chapter 1, there's a certain man of uh, Ramtham Zophim of the hill country of Ephraim, whose name was Elkanah, the son of Jerom, son of Elihu, son of Tohu, son of Zuf, uh, Zuf, aren't these awesome names? I really want to go back and rename our kids, <laughs> just for fun. An Ephrathite. He had two wives. The name of the one was Hannah. The name of the other, Peninnah. Uh, Peninnah had children, but Hannah had no children. Now this man used to go up year by year from a city to worship and to sacrifice to the Lord of hosts at Shiloh, where the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, were priests of the Lord. On the day when Elkanah, Elkanah sacrificed, he would give portions to Peninnah, his, um, his wife, and to all her sons and daughters. But to Hannah he gave a double portion, because he loved her though the Lord had closed her womb. And her rival used to provoke her grievously to irritate her because the Lord had closed her womb. So it went on year by year. And as often as she went up to the house of the Lord, she used to provoke her. 
Therefore Hannah wept and would not eat. And Elkanah, her husband, said to her, Hannah, why do you weep? And why do you not eat? And why is your heart so sad? Am I not more to you than ten sons? Probably not the best thing to tell one of your wives. It's kind of bad enough you're married to another woman. Uh, the second wife already probably feels second uh, to the first wife. Now the first wife has children. Hannah doesn't. But that's not bad enough. The first wife has to make fun of her and provoke her for not having children. And then her husband comes to her and says, Am I not enough? I mean, I'm better than ten sons, babe. I mean, can you imagine? This, this is mayhem, right? And Hannah, like my sister uh, Stephanie, who prayed, um, she got an answer. And by the way, um, Stephanie and Ronnie have two beautiful, healthy children. Um, God answers our prayers. A lot of times it's not in the way that we want, but God answers our prayers. And this is where Jared picked up here. After they had eaten and drunk in Shiloh, Hannah rose. Now Eli the priest was sitting on the seat beside the doorpost of the temple of the Lord. She was deeply distressed and prayed to the Lord and wept bitterly. And she vowed a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if you will indeed look on the affliction of your servant and remember me and not forget your servant, but will give to your servant a son, then I will give him to the Lord all the days of his life. And I want everybody's ears to perk up, DP, and no razor shall touch his head. <laughs> and you know what? God heard Hannah's prayer. It was years of being tormented. It was years of being barren. It was years of feeling terrible and having an eating disorder and and being so distressed and so anxious. And God heard Hannah's prayer. Hannah became pregnant. She did, in fact, dedicate her son to God. When he was weaned, she dropped him off at the temple. She brought him to Eli the priest, and she walked away. Samuel became one of the most powerful leaders in all of the Bible. Uh, he was incredibly dedicated to God. He was a great man. He was a great man of faith. God answered her prayers. And I think we need to trust God, and we need to believe that God is going to answer our prayers. And I'll, I'll end with one last story. Um, last Tuesday, Mom and I were talking, and, and we, um, we do a weekly podcast, and we, we talk about sexual abuse. And um, I've just been kind of in this funk, and I was like, you know, I, I don't know if I want to keep doing this. We've been doing this for over three years, and it's, it's a time commitment. Um, it's not a huge time commitment, but in addition to working full-time, it's just one more thing on the plate. And so I was really pray, praying and talking to Mom, and I was like, you know, I just I feel stuck, and I don't know if we're really making a difference in, in people's lives. And, you know, I look at the statistics, and they're kind of plateaued, and I was like, I, I just... I don't know, I just feel like I'm in this funk. And she said, Jimmy, we need, to, we need to start praying. And she's like, before we make any big decision, we just need to pray. And, and we should open every podcast. Before we start recording, we need to just pray together and pour our hearts to God and just ask him for direction and, and see where that leads us. Uh, that was on Tuesday. On Wednesday, I got a, a text message from somebody who wants to, wants to remain anonymous. And she said, hey, I don't know, I can't explain this. She said, I, like, I know this is really random. I know you haven't heard from me in, in like a really long time, but I woke up this morning and God just laid something on my heart and I could not stop thinking about you and your mom and the impact that you guys have had on me through your podcast. And she said, when I was at my lowest and I was really struggling, she said, it was your podcast that carried me through that. And she said, I want, I want, to, I want to bless you guys. Um, and I want, I want to bless you financially. And I want, I want to make this podcast 
I want you to invest in it, make this podcast really take off. Um, and so I called mom up and I was like, all right, mom. <laughs> I was like, uh, whatever prayer it was that, that you were doing, I was like, God's listening. Um, it was crystal clear. And sometimes I have a hard time figuring out, like, all right, how is God answering my prayer? Is God answering my prayer? This was so crystal clear. And, and this person who wants to remain anonymous just kept saying, I, I can't explain the weight of that tug on my heart. And she said, it was the second I woke up, it was just this immediate tug on my heart. And God's saying, this is what you need to do for them. Um, God is incredible. And we really, really have to believe that what we pray for according to God's will has already been answered. And I want us as a congregation to begin praying and being specific about our prayers for where we want God to lead this congregation. Um, I don't feel like we've really done that or done that well, at least on a, on a corporate level, um, to, to do that together as a group. But I really want to pray that God breaks into this, this congregation and that God moves us out into the community and into the lives of people who are hurting and struggling and that God blesses us beyond measure. Um, I'll leave you with that. I'll leave you with that thought. I want you guys to pray, um, pray, pray, pray. Um, will you guys commit to, to opening your day in prayer and closing your day in prayer specifically for the life of this congregation? If you guys will do that, um, I can't wait to see what God's going to do with those prayers. Uh, if you've not yet taken that step to put Christ on in baptism or you have any prayer needs this morning, um, you can come up as DP leads this song for us. Oh, by the way, I forgot about this. I threw this slide in last minute this, this morning. I'll end with this. We just launched a few days ago um, this campaign for, for the next well, which is in memory of, of Mike Leck. Um, in the first two days, we had $1,165. 15% of the well was covered in the first 48 hours. Um, and that was with zero advertising. That was before we, we told you guys about it. So this page is now um, public. I will email the link out to you guys this week. Um, please share, share, share. Um, if you don't have money to give, that's fine. That's great. But please pray over this. Pour over this in prayer and share it with people. Um, we really, really, really are blessing people. Uh, let's stand and sing together.